so welcome to the last day of the captain's blog. Um, it's Sunday and although the technically the last day would be Monday when I take the boat back in the morning, I have to be at work tomorrow so I'm having to take the boat back Sunday evening hoping there's some space in Barnes Brinkcraft Yard. I had a look last night on the uh, webcam and there does appear to be a space though how I'm going to get into that space remains to be seen. Um, it's five minutes to eleven in the morning and it's an absolutely glorious morning. It is the best morning and day of all of the time I've been afloat. It is the warmest, um, it's still a bit of a breeze but it's nothing like it was yesterday. I spent the morning basically tidying everything up, cleaning the boat down, packing everything so all I've got to do is take my luggage off the boat later. I just sneaked down to Wormat Water to uh, dispose of the rubbish. And now I'm on Wormat Dyke and I'll be heading up and then to the River Thurn and then down the River Bewer. And although I don't need to be at the boatyard until a lot later, my train's at uh, half six from uh, Wroxham and God what a journey have I got tonight. Um, I don't get to Norwich until 1840 but my train leaves Norwich at three minutes past eight and I'm mixing the 12 and 24 hour clock up, you're right. And then from there I have to get a train from uh, Norwich to Cambridge and then from Cambridge to London Liverpool Street. So having left Wroxham at half past six, I don't get to London Liverpool Street until quarter to eleven this evening and then it's another 45 minutes or so from Liverpool Street to my local tube station and then walk home. So it'll probably be, you know, close to midnight before I actually and ready to settle down at home and go to bed and then up for work tomorrow morning. Oh, what the joys. But for the right now, it's lovely. I cannot complain and, you know, that's nothing to do with boating. That's just the, uh, the fact that I'm a public transport evangelist. Whatever that is. Um, so as I say, today's a take an easy day. Um, I've got no plan. I'm going to stop somewhere for lunch. I may go back to the boatyard early because then once I'm in, I'm in and I can go and get some decent food somewhere uh, because I've used up all of the provisions on the boat bar a few little bits and pieces. So that's the plan. Um, not the longest day, not the most interesting, but I thought I'd bring you along for the ride nonetheless. So until something else happens, or as it happens.
over the sky. It was underneath the clouds, but it, it was just completely covering the sky, blocking out the sunlight. You could see further into the distance, nighttime, that was coming towards the daylight. That's how dark it was. And I had no idea what it was, but as it came closer, it also came lower. And I started to be able to make out what it was, and it wasn't just one thing. It was thousands of things, millions of things. And as they came closer, I heard a sound. And it sounded like whispers. People whispering things. I couldn't make out what it was, but it was just, just thousands of people whispering. And once it came close enough, I knew that all of these tiny little things these tiny little things, but all of these tiny little things, I realized that they were UFOs. I realized that we were being invaded by aliens on the most beautiful day that I've ever seen. And I think that dream means that the day that we come in contact with something other than us, something that we can learn from, something that will change our daily lives.
So having left uh, the moorings at St Bennett's Abbey, we're now heading um, again up the River Bure. On my right hand side shortly will be the mouth of the River Ant. And it's nice to see uh, the improvement works that have uh, been completed um, at the ruins. And um, step free access um, from the car park though, it's not really a car park. I think it's best to arrive by boat or foot, you can you know, walk there. Um, but no, it really is still a very quiet, very peaceful, nice place to, to enjoy um, some contemplation and some thought, and especially on such a lovely Sunday afternoon as I'm having here. So we'll see what's up next, or as it happens. So we're just coming through um, Horning, not long past the Ferry Inn on our right hand side, and then soon it'll be Lowest Street, our South Gates, and of course the Swan Inn where we'll take a sharp left and then we'll be heading towards Sowhouse Broad and after that there's Roxham Broad and then Roxham. Time now is five past one in the afternoon so um, it's just a, such a lovely day and it doesn't feel like a Sunday really it feels like I don't know the sort of start of a weekend and when everything's sort of winding down and it's time to enjoy yourself and the weather's good and I'm trying to put off the fact that this is a few hours later and I have to be getting off the boat and embarking on a long journey back to London and instead of waking up tomorrow somewhere lovely and quiet you will be in London and it'll be off to the office but um, I suppose I'll just have to look forward to retirement when I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> oh, what a long way away that is. So, morning, not in the morning, but in the afternoon, and we're just coming up to the main sort of village of Horning. So as you can see ahead of us is the, uh, the main sort of village, and the other side of, of these houses is the main kind of high street, although it's called Lower Street. And from that you can get to places like the post office, the new inn, the swan. There's a restaurant during the season. There's kind of a gift shop, come um, ice cream parlor, you name it. Horning's got a little bit of everything. I mean, it's a very pretty village, popular one. Not always possible to moor here in the season, certainly. But would you just look at the lovely day it is.
So here we are, finally back home at Barnes Springcraft here in Roxham, uh, and it's a busy old yard. First of all, I went over there, and I thought, well, that's all very well, but you know, getting my case off, and where do I go? How do I get to the roadway? So um, I noticed there was a spot here. So um, I'm rather impressed with myself. My congratulating, patting myself on the back for getting in here without bow thrusters. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> you know what you're doing? You can do good things with it. Basically, you just go around there and then reverse in here. But, um, nicely snug back home where it came from. But this is the last space, I suppose there's one there, if you moved this one down. But um, this is the sort of perils of hiring early in the season when very few others do. The boatyards are ram packed, so if you're hiring from another boatyard, for example, and you come here to visit Roxham, um, there's no space to moor here. Whereas, because in the high season, all of these boats would be out, hopefully, if business is good, and then you've got space to come and moor yourself. But um, it's now. Oh, just past 25 minutes to 4 o'clock. So I've got all my stuff ready to go. And um, all that there is to do now is to go and get some uh, dinner. Because by the time I get back to London tonight, at about, I don't know, quarter past, half past 11 in the evening, um, I'm not going to feel like having dinner then. So uh, it's a long old uh, trek for me once I leave Roxham, but um, it's just been a fabulous holiday and I can't believe how many day boats I've seen from MC Marine, Broads Tours, Barnes Craft, you know, everyone fine way, everyone's out enjoying the sunshine um, and behaving themselves, not going crazy and hanging their legs over the side and going too fast, it's just like families out having a good time. So um, anyway, I said it earlier, but I'll say it again, if you have been, thanks for watching, and I hope it's been alright for you. It's time for me to go, so until next time, which I don't know when that will be, um, the captain's blog continues. This one ends. So if you have been watching, thanks a lot. Catch you next time.